Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation, and chronic daily migraine survivor. I am here with Dr. Vincent Martin, MD. He is the director of the Headache and Facial Pain Center at the University of Cincinnati, and he is also the president of the National Headache Foundation. Hello, Dr. Martin. How are you doing tonight? Uh, Good, Lindsay. How are you? I'm great. Okay, so today we have an awesome topic that everyone can relate to because we are all interested in headache and we are all interested in how to get rid of it. So today we are talking about non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs and their role in migraine and chronic headache. So uh, first let's discuss just NSAIDs in general. Uh, the different types that are out there, and we're going to start with the ones that are easiest to find, the ones that are over the counter. So which ones would those be? Which ones have a role in migraine that we can get a hold of just in our regular grocery store? Well, there are a variety of different names. Some are generic and some are trade names, but the most common ones would be ibuprofen, or the trade name would be Motrin, Mm -hmm. or naproxen, trade name would be Aleve, Mm -hmm. or or the other one would be ketoprofen um, as well. So those are probably the three most common varieties of over-the-counter medications that are used uh, by patients. So I think that people are gonna be surprised to realize that, I mean, there are more than just these that we just brought up, but people are surprised to realize that these medicines that are common might actually have a role in migraine, uh, either taken alone or in combination with other migraine meds. And no, it's not just a headache but these medicines still have a role in our disease. So um, how, do we, how do these play a role, these over-the-counter medicines? What, do we, they have a higher dose than maybe for regular headache or? Well, th- we do know that NSAIDs are very effective for, for migraine. In my experience, they really work probably better for mild to moderate migraine as opposed to severe migraine, particularly when they're used in low doses. Mm -hmm. So the dose can be very important. So you may need to take higher doses of even over-the-counter meds for them to be effective. So if you use lower doses, they may be, they may be less effective. And then there are a variety of prescription medications Mm -hmm. uh, that are actually different than over-the-counter meds. And one of, and they can be highly effective. One is uh, intramuscular Toradol or Ketorolac. Toradol is the, the trade name. And that's given in emergency rooms and physicians' offices all over the country to take and to treat refractory migraine headaches. There are also other formulations or other types of delivery systems. Mm-hmm. One is uh, Ketorolac given by, by nasal route. Mm-hmm. The trade name for that is called Sprix. And then there's a third variety. Um, there's a powder formulation of diclofenac potassium right. with the trade name of, of uh, Cambia that can be put, the powder is put in like three ounces of water and you drink it and it's absorbed very quickly into the bloodstream. So all NSAIDs are not created equal. Some tend to be more effective and some tend to be less effective. And these these delivery systems where they get into the bloodstream very quickly, either by shot, by nasal spray, or by a powder formulation, uh, tend to work very quickly and are very effective. Okay. Um, so this is an interesting question that I think a lot of people don't know the answer to. Why do NSAIDs, NSAIDs help us with our migraine? It's a great question. Because um, NSAIDs are actually are anti-inflammatory. So what this implies is that there probably is an inflammatory component or inflammation um, that, that's involved with migraine. And we think the inflammation is involved in the lining of the brain called the dura, that during a migraine, there's this upregulation of inflammatory cells, and then they release different uh, chemicals uh, called prostaglandins, Mm -hmm. and these prostaglandins can actually kind of heighten pain sensitivity and make it worse. So the anti-inflammatories actually block the production of these prostaglandins. Okay. Uh, I think that's important because I think sometimes people stop trying them because uh, one type didn't work for them in their migraine or they know that their migraine is severe enough that, uh, that maybe something that, that is just an anti-inflammatory isn't going to help them. So I think it's important that people know that there are some out there that might be able to help them. Um, so do, do NSAIDs cause rebound headaches? 
It's a very controversial area in the headache field. Uh, it's really thought that any medication, if used more than about two days a week, has the propensity to cause rebound headaches. So rebound headaches are, medic are headaches that are actually induced by the overuse of medications. And I can tell you that NSAIDs are one of the most easily accessible um, acute medications and the one, ones that are often commonly overused. I think that the NSAIDs probably have less of a propensity to cause medication overuse or rebound headaches than say some other medications, but nevertheless, it's still thought that they probably can as well. Plus there can be some consequences of, of overusing um, anti-inflammatories, which we'll talk about later in the podcast. Right. So that's actually uh, what my next question was going to be. What are some of the side effects we need to watch out for when we're taking NSAIDs for our chronic headaches or chronic migraine? Well, there are a number of them. Well, uh, the first is that if you use them for a long, long period of time, they can damage the kidney. Mm -hmm. So you really want to try to minimize their use. And I think that's another reason for probably not taking them more than a couple of days a week. Uh, the second one would be it can irritate the stomach and cause uh, something called um, NSAID-induced gastritis, so inflammation of the lining of the stomach. And then also rarely, it can, it can produce uh, ulcers of the stomach. And then there's a third thing, is there is a rare instance where NSAIDs can actually worsen asthma. And usually people have uh, nasal polyps with that. Uh, sometimes they have allergic reactions to NSAIDs. And if that happens, you'd want to avoid them altogether because there's a high likelihood that you could have a very serious allergic reaction with these medications. Okay. Um, that leads into, there was some interesting data presented at a, on a poster recently at the American Headache Society meeting, and it was about the incidence of gastric ulcer disease in people with migraine. And it showed that those of us with chronic migraine who use NSAIDs a lot do seem to have more gastric ulcer disease than the average person in the population. Can you tell us just a little bit about that? Sure. They, they found that migraine overall was associated with a, a, a quite significantly increased risk for ulcer disease. And also those with more frequent headaches had an even greater likelihood of having uh, ulcer disease. And the use of NSAIDs as it went up higher also was associated with, uh, with ulcer disease. So it's probably simply because NSAIDs are commonly used in those with more frequent headaches uh, that ulcer disease tends to go up quite a bit in migraine patients. Uh, what are some of the things we can do uh, to avoid this type of side effect? Well, um, I think first you have to recognize which patients might be at risk for developing an ulcer with the NSAIDs. Uh, first, if you have an infection of your stomach called H. pylori, um, which is just a bacteria that, that uh, causes inflammation in your stomach, then you're more likely to have damage um, and an ulcer created by the NSAIDs. Um, second of all, if you're older, then you're more prone to this uh, with more frequent use as well. But some of the things you could potentially do if you were at high risk, um, or if you've had a past history of an ulcer with NSAIDs, that's another high risk category as well. You could take uh, medicines that protect the stomach. Mm -hmm. There have been a variety of different studies uh, looking at, uh, that, uh, looking at uh, like things like um, uh, uh, ranitidine and, uh, and, and other medications are called H2 blockers. Okay. And there's also something called proton pump inhibitors called PPIs. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, um, protonics and omeprazole and a, a variety of things like that. And there's a third one called uh, Cytotec, which actually uh, kind of lines the stomach and kind of protects it. So there are a number of different meds that one could take along with the NSAIDs if you, if you had no other choice and we're using them on a frequent basis. But I would su suggest you discuss that with your primary care physician or other healthcare provider to see if that would be indicated in your situation. Okay. Does it help to take the NSAIDs, if you're taking them orally, to take them with food? Um, or is that just a myth? Well, there's not great data with that, but there is some suggestion that maybe if you take NSAIDs on a full stomach, they might be less irritating. Um, but I can't conclusively say that's, that's true in all cases. Okay. So um, do you, sometimes if you combine your NSAIDs with other medications, does that enhance their effect or is that a way to make your medications more effective? 
Well, I think the first thing you have to recognize is that there probably are many chemicals involved in migraine. Mm -hmm. So combining an NSAID with, say, another med makes perfect sense because they're probably hitting different parts of the pathway. Mm -hmm. If you combine an anti-inflammatory with a tryptan, so that's like an Imitrex or Sumatriptan-like drug, the duration of action of the Sumatriptan is much longer. So basically, uh, patients are more likely to stay pain-free between two and 24 hours. So you probably want to consider, if you don't have a contraindication, taking your, if you take triptans, uh, you take an NSAID as well. So is there any uh, danger in taking uh, a medication that's combined with caffeine too often? Well, that particular, if you have, if you combine a medication as aspirin, caffeine, and the, the common one would be acetaminophen or Tylenol, all three together, that medication in particular has a high likelihood of causing rebound headaches. Okay. So you, you should really not use that more than a couple of days a week. Uh, okay. So that would be probably the caveat with that combination. Okay. All right. Is there anything else you would like to add to our conversation on NS ed, excuse me, NSAIDs and chronic headache or migraine? I just think that NSAIDs are an important part of our treatment regimen. And particularly if you use them in the right way, I think they can be quite effective and have minimal complications. And just because it's an NSAID does not mean that it's not an effective therapy for migraine. Um, and particularly one uh, NSAIDs that are delivered in different ways, like either intramuscular or intranasal or through a powder formulation, tend to work quite quickly and can be quite effective for some patients uh, with, uh, with migraine, but they're, they're probably not the answer for everyone. Right, okay. Well, that was great information. I hope everyone found something important and helpful in today's podcast episode. Please join us again next week for Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. Good night.